Welcome to today's reflective act of worship from Newcastle Cathedral. We hope you will find it helpful as we gather today from many different places, yet one in faith and hope. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God together. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe place, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. Let us pray. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today, Luke 10, verses 25 to 37. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbour as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbour? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while travelling, came near him, and when he saw him he was moved with pity, he went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Remembering that the word of God is living and active, let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of scripture. Today's reflection is offered by me, Reverend Thomas Sharp. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Mercy is an almost impossible concept for me. I never know what showing mercy really means. The beginning of this parable of the Good Samaritan, the scene that sets it up, the young lawyer coming to test Jesus, saying, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied with the summary of the law, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and you shall love your neighbour as yourself. That I can kind of understand. Love my neighbour as I love myself. Love God with all I am. I may not manage to do it, but I kind of have a sense of what it means. But when it's demonstrated in the parable of the Good Samaritan, show mercy, then it gets tricky. I don't want to show some people mercy. I like feeling judgmental of some people. I like seeing some people 
in a bad situation when I feel they've deserved it, especially people who have made others suffer. And there's a kind of part of me that goes, yes, now they experience what they've made others feel. That's not a good part of me and it's not a merciful part of me. But there's also times when I don't know what to do. Does showing mercy mean intervening in public situations? Only last night I was on the bus during a fight. I was in my cassock. Now, do I intervene and break up the fight? As if someone might respond to a dog collar. Or do I stay back? I've gone both ways in the past, and one time I got chased up the street, it didn't go very well for me. Another time it did go well. But was I showing mercy? Mercy is difficult because it requires us to be selfless. It requires us to behave in ways that actually we're not taught to behave. From our earliest days of childhood, we're taught that justice means good things to the good and bad things to the bad. We're taught to be careful, to be self-preserving. Number one is the rule of the thumb, I was taught at first aid when I was a small child. But is that mercy? A book that has been very influential on Pope Francis's ministry, I know I'm an Anglican, but Pope Francis has been inspiring, was this book, uh, Walter Casper's book on mercy. Cardinal Casper explores mercy from a philosophical, a theological perspective, and tries to translate that into something practical into something we can live by. And he is inspired by a Protestant, a Lutheran theologian, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was martyred under the Nazi regime. But these words of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he quotes at length, it's delightfully ecumenical this, got an Anglican reading, a Catholic reading, a Lutheran. These followers of Jesus have in their life with him renounced their own dignity, for they are merciful. As if their own needs and their own distress were not enough, they take upon themselves the distress and humiliation and sin of others. They have an irresistible love for the downtrodden, the sick, the wretched, the wronged, the outcast and all who are tortured with anxiety. They go out and seek all who are enmeshed in the toils of sin and guilt. No distress is too great, no sin too appalling for their pity. If any man falls into disgrace, the merciful will sacrifice their own honour to shield him and take his shame upon themselves. They will be found consorting with publicans and sinners, careless of the shame they incur thereby. In order that they may be merciful, they cast away the most priceless treasure of human life, their personal dignity and honour. For the only honour and dignity they know is their Lord's own mercy, to which alone they owe their very lives. He was not ashamed of his disciples, he became the brother of mankind, and bore their shame unto the death of the cross. This is how Jesus the crucified was merciful. His followers owe their lives entirely to his mercy. To be mercy, merciful, means refusing to be ashamed with pity, with justice, with love. To be ready to renounce our own dignity, to respond in love. I don't know if I'm very good at that. God grant me grace, God grant us all grace to be more merciful. Take a moment, press pause if you want, to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection. Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. Lord, help us, we pray to know your presence in the midst of our daily tasks, 
to make time for the love and devotion we have for you, to be attentive to the light of your eternity breaking into, shining in the midst of, and transforming the way we see and approach our everyday lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, as we look for your life and light, help us also to be devoted to those you call us to serve, to seek your face in those we not only choose to share our lives with, but also those we stumble across, the people you put on our path to challenge and inspire us, that we might truly have the courage to love all of our neighbours as our very selves. Christ, have mercy. Lord, we pray the nearness of your presence, the warmth of your love, the tenderness of your thoroughgoing care for all those who today are ignored and marginalised, all whose needs we forget, the people we leave by the side of the road in our time. Bless and equip, we pray, those who go on extending your goodness and grace to all, and give continued strength and perseverance to those who ask others, who ask us, to open our eyes and widen our gaze for the sake of all whom you love. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself, and so bring us at last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Today's blessing is adapted from Dietrich Bonhoeffer's prayers for his fellow prisoners from Christmas in 1943, and I invite you to say it with me. O oh, Heavenly Father, you have granted me many blessings. Help me also to accept what is hard from your hand. You will lay on me no more than I can bear. You make all things work together for good for your children. It is your will that I should know you and turn to you. Lord, I hear your call and follow. Help me. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Now that our choirs have returned to sing in the cathedral, the format of our daily reflections has changed. On Thursdays and Fridays, a short reflection and prayers will be offered in the context of a service of choral evensong, which you can follow here on YouTube at 5.30pm or watch at your convenience later. Monday to Wednesday's reflections will remain the same. We hope and pray that you will continue to find them helpful. <laughs>